Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome. I, I guess, <laughs> I guess I, I, <laughs> I haven't played for quite some time, and I logged on today to see that somebody gave me a gift, the object two five nine A. Unfortunately, whenever I go to profile, I can't do a shout out. It's not here anymore. But I, I mean, you can see the last battle I played was on the twenty fifth. It's currently the twelfth of March, so that gives you an idea on what I've been doing, and everything else. And I'm going to pause this for two seconds. Good music is good music. Now, jumping back to the object 259A. I'm going to go off of memory for this tank, okay? Um, to give you an idea, I don't have anything open up right here. You see Baldur's Gate, Valorant. I don't even play Valorant. But uh, I'm going to pull up Google... Pop it over. I have absolutely no idea what the statistics are, but I do know one thing about this tank uh, before I do any of that. The side armor here, from the review that I watched of this tank, I think two years ago on PC, I think uh, I, I think I watched a Des Gaming, maybe a Des Gaming. It was either that or the class. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I do know that the armor on the side of this, there's a really bad spot for side scraping. Yeah, right there. It's 100 millimeters right on the rear. So if you're side scraping, that plays against you heavily because you'll side scrape and it's just easy pins on the side all the time. And then what's the armor next to that? I swear I just saw it. Uh, okay, so underneath it's uh, 50 millimeters. So 152 is going to overmatch. And uh, okay, there you go. There's the 90 and then the 100 right underneath that 90. Yep. That's not bad, though. The entire rear being 90, there's no HE on this. And then top armor, 30 millimeters on the hull. It's top of the turret. Okay, 40, so 122 is going to overmatch that. That's nice. But that's further back. So what's the top rear here? 50? 52. Okay, so that's uh, no guns are going to be able to overmatch. 152s are going to bounce. I mean, 155s. 155? 155? I'm not doing the math today. My brain hurts. Anyways... Let's take a look at some of the statistics of the tank. Okay, the website looks funky now compared to what I remember. Um, I've, I've been slacking off. I haven't been in the mood to play any World of Tanks or anything else. If anything, I've actually been more focused on uh, Hell Let Loose right here. I actually just hit rank 102, playing armor inside there. And... um. This Sunday, I'm going to be participating in an event, an armor event, a tank event, over on the Fresh Baked Goods uh, channels. If you ever want to look him up, just type in that name, the Fresh Baked Goods. And then this Sunday, I think it'll be on Twitch. Uh, it's a tier 8. Is this thing super new? Like, did this come out today, or did it come out? I have no idea when this came out. Okay, there you are. 8,500 gold. That's actually not a bad pickup for that tank, for this, for a heavy tank. One second. How much was it in the store? 8,800, yet you have it displayed on the website as 8,500. What comes with this? Is it just you're charging us gold ammunition? I hope you're not charging for gold ammo, because if you're charging for gold ammo, that's petty. They, they probably are, in all honesty. All right, max speed is 60, reverse speed of 12. 12 is a little bit uncomfortable. 380 view range, that's not bad. It's about average for Russia. Um, I'm trying to remember how to do things. Uh, oh, wow, that's obsessive zoom in. Damage of 420, 4.26 rounds per minute before 20. 420 is becoming their new favorite uh, damage type to add into the game now. But seeing it's 420, reload of 4.26 rounds a minute, 1,789 damage. Penetration. 233 base pin? 285 premium pin? Is that heat? So 1400 standard. That's definitely APCR. Okay, yeah, APCR and heat. Alright, that's actually pretty nasty penetration. I don't know what's going on with all these tanks that Wargaming are adding in with these really high penetrations. Uh, reload time of 14.1, so we're going to be looking at around the range of like 11 seconds. 
maybe 11.3, 11.4 with the fully maxed out crew and everything else on this. I'm going to be setting this thing up. Aim time at 2.8 seconds isn't bad. That's not bad in the slightest. Accuracy at 0.4. Turret rotation accuracy, that's not bad at all. Uh, six degrees of gun depression. That's definitely not going to hinder it. The elevation might, though. at 16. Fully rotatable turret. 260 turret armor. It, the turret does remind me of a 260. Um, position, primary. Uh, this is the most useless information that you can add into anything. I don't care what anyone says. That's just useless. All right, so we got 15 horsepower to ton. Now, in a classic wargaming fashion, you got to double check that because they always mess something up on these all the time. They've done it so many times on the website compared to the actual uh, in-game. 15% fire chance. That's not too bad. Terrain resistance, horrible. Off-road driving required. Um, not a whole lot to go over. Statistics on this? There's not a... Seriously, is that it? Does anyone else feel like this is really subpar? I gotta double check. What the heck? Okay, that was all of it. I'm just being a Muppet. All right, so you can look at the armor model here. Some decent armor. Really good over angle, as long as you're not, you know, hope they don't pay attention to the rear end there. Uh, easy overmatch on top. There's a back armor, so if you're brawling on this, and you're going side to side and you're brawling. Uh, frontal armor. I do like the way that lower plate's designed. Your actual lower plate hits auto ricochet all over the place. So if you're playing this correctly, and you're pulling a corner just right, you can pull corners ever so slightly outward and really bait some shells into that. Especially against uh, 320, against tier 10s and against 340 heat, maybe not so much. Uh, maybe, maybe you can probably do some easy pulls. Really good turret though, except for that hatch. That hatch is going to stand out quite a bit. 100 millimeter stick. Uh, 260 turret, 205, 150. Really good angles here. Uh, what's the gun mental like? 272? Spaced armor? Spaced armor, no protection. Ouch. And then a couple of easy pin spots up in the top section. Let's actually uh, flatten out that gun. Do those spots maintain? Hold on, what's this? Ouch. Okay, ricochet, then penetration. So you're actually bouncing off. Alright, that's a big problem for this tank. That's a full ricochet off the gun mantle. Well, yeah, gun mantle ricochet into the top hull armor right here on the bottom section. So if you guys are versing this and having a problem, if it's gun pointed right at you, kind of looks guaranteed across the board. Let's max out the gun depression. Yep, that's another one. Let's uh, bring the gun up a tad bit. I mean, if you're at this angle, you got hatches to fire at. But I mean, if, if he's got the hatch covered, for instance, if he's pulling like a building or something, and you're li it, it limited in what you're able to fire at, uh, that'd just be a good spot to hit right there. Right underneath the gun. We're trying to catch that back hatch. This is using maximum gun depression. Back hatch disappears ever so slightly. That's a big weak spot right there. Okay. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to equip it real quick. And then I'm going to have a really bad first experience. I will definitely say 38 rounds of ammunition is pretty nice on this. Did I see that on the website or was I just not paying attention? Okay, 38 rounds of ammunition. I was way wrong about that reload. It's actually 10.03 seconds. All right, Abby being a first map back in a fat minute, and I still don't have any of my game audio on, and it's going to be loud as all heck whenever I turn it on. Oh, man, I didn't do any of my audio. Oh, yeah, it's really loud in my ears. You know, I've um not really sad about playing other games, in all honesty. Because... I, I don't know what it is. I've been getting burnt out a lot faster than I used to. And seeing a 9.9 .9 second reload, I actually want to reload. Yeah, see right there it says 10, and whenever you actually load the gun, it's 9.9. .9. Something's wrong with their scaling inside the game. I need to turn down this headphone volume. Jesus, that was excruciating. I had to drop it by like 40 decibels in my ears. Jesus. That's my fault, though, because I'm the one that did that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I've, I've just been burnt out. And there's nothing that's really been bringing me back. Like, even it, comp, I got burnt out in comp. Like, I uh, immediately. Just immediately. I just, I haven't had 
the the want to stream, the want to do anything, uh, any recording for the game whatsoever. Actually, well, this might be a really good spot to test out this uh, frontal hall, so we can just pop it. See if they want to shoot that uh, lower plate or try to. Depending if I'm in a bad spot, I think it might be in a bad spot. Yeah, just looking at the map, like, everyone's so far spread, and then there's only two heavy tanks in this team. Well, there's three, four heavy tanks. Uh, Absolution got taken down right away. Side scraping is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. What is that? T-34, 2GFT. Literally just a 85mm attached to a T-34 hull. Churchill 7... Okay, so they did do a couple of things. His tank got lit up a lot better. Uh, they did change around a couple of things in game, which can be a little bit better. I don't like my entire indicator being that red, though. Seems like they brought back the really weird color red. They should make it to where, like, if you're aiming at a target, that red pops up to where, like, where they're actually sticking out. That would make it really nice. Paladin. I forgot what the HE pin was on this. I know we got 233 or 230 and then 285, but I can't remember what the HE pin was, so. Fire. Ouch. If you face hug the Paladin, you might be okay. Actually, we got some really good side angle armor here. He wants to come frontal. Really good armor. You can definitely brawl inside this thing, no problem. You just gotta make sure you're keeping track of side scraping. Put my little American flag in a Russian tank. I gotta say, the design of this though, it, it's guns have guns. Like, is that two machine guns on that belt? It is. And then on the front, you got your Colax. And I don't know about those other two small ones. But this thing's guns has guns. Let's put a little bit of pressure on Cap. Slow them down, make them want to come back. Hopefully somebody decides to jump on Cap and apply some... Never mind, I should have stayed on Cap. Uh, WZ111, 1GFT, he's going to be around this corner. I'm... You know what? I'm going to try it. We're going to pull this. We're going to pull this with the front. Hopefully he fires in too. Yep. There we go. I mean, this might be a fast match, depending on if they just outright full cap us. Pull him with the front track again. Heat round through the top plate. I mean, he does have that 340. So that was about 320 effective armor on the top plate. We might have been down slope too, so it might have been around the range of 290. And 20 seconds on cap. Sad face. No, that's... Yeah, that, that, that probably was around 290 against his 340 heat. I gotta say, the mobility of this is really nice. I didn't. I can't remember what the track traverse was of this, but... The ground resistance, this is with my uh, Valkyrie crew, if you guys look at my past videos. It does feel like it's performing pretty well. Becky Lynch and Black Prince. Okay. Is the Becky Lynch and the Sinlac starting to make a little bit of a comeback? Because I swear, each time I log on, I see those two tanks popping up more. Then again, Becky Lynch is kind of considered an ex exclusive tank now. And I am a little bit sad that they didn't actually add in the uh, proper Sinlac. They give it that little grenade launcher with like 50 millimeters of penetration. But it does have an obsessive amount of ammunition compared to what it was over on PC. Because I think on PC it only gets 40 rounds. But you get a 90 penetration high explosive with 320 alpha. Maybe that's why they didn't want to add that in. Just because it would have been redonkulous. Two kills, 3,000 damage. That's not a bad first match. 100,000 silver made. Third class mastery. People are performing good inside this. Kind of looking to go up against some tier 10s in the next one. You ask, and you shall receive. I get to go against an aviary. You know, that makes me happy. But the Highlander, the 114 SP2, they're definitely going to struggle to pin this. I actually got to say, like, 
the lower plate in this with all that auto ricochet angles. I really should have double checked the auto ricochets depending on if like I'm higher up or not. I'm centered higher up. Do that real fast. If you're centered higher up, you lose. You got to be almost pinpoint perfect with the enemy the entire time. Slight gun elevation to maintain auto ricochet in the top plate. Really good turret armor, though. Except for the hatch. The hatch is the only thing that really plays against you. But, seeing a highly mobile tier 8 heavily armored tank come into the game... Yeah, this is a little bit scary. This is, like, comparable to the Kree Vets, if you play the Kree Vets. And 15 power to wait. Was it 15? Jesus, I am not... having a good time remembering anything right now. Okay, it's 15 on the dot. Alright. Don't judge me. My big smootheriness is beyond your comprehension. It, it's massive. Now, coming back to the game, look at this, okay? This, this is one of the reasons why I am kind of just done playing. Look at, look at the effect here. There's one tier 9 per team. Tier 9 is not a popular tier. Tier 9 has never been a popular tier. And they're doing nothing to make tier 9s more um, enjoyable to play, other than people who are trying to 3 mark. Like, there's not a lot of incentive for people to play their tier 9s at all. It's like, why would you play a 9 when you can play a 10? Because you already have a 10. Instead, they're adding in all these premium 10s that you can buy. And what they should do is add in tier 9s that you can buy in tier 10s that you have to do a challenge to earn. Because if you do an earn off on them, that would work out a lot better. Like a legitimate hardcore challenge to be able to earn those tanks instead. I do believe he's got one more round. Could be wrong, though. Alright, that was a ricochet into the um, armor on the bottom. Maybe not. He probably aimed directly there. And just full pinned it. That's kind of what... It seems like the Pershing, that's what he did. Now for the Highlander. He's going to be getting shot from right, which means I'm going to take a little bit of time out. All I got to do is have a little bit of patience and he'll make a mistake. 393 damage, though. The 420 Alpha is definitely going to make this thing feel nice. Overturn the turret, but really good side armor on those Highlanders. There's a chance that it wasn't really about how the uh, turret was. It could have just simply been that my shell went high or low and hit the angled part of the armor. But 285 heat pin, this, this is a little bit obsessive in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, it's a slower round, but it was a 900, 850, around that range. So, I mean, if you're close quarters, it's going to be effective, but long range, you can make it work. It's just going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. There's, like, nothing actually that's going to be bad about this tank as it continues to play. Because if you're playing haul down, sure, you get weak spots on the hatch, but you can always play around that. That much of an issue. Let's not really expose that lower plate. Let's give him a slight. Slight opportunity to hit it, but nothing crazy. Now, I wonder if we can go through the gun mantle with the heat, but I don't think we're going to be able to. Could go for hatch, but that accuracy is going to play against me. The gun handling's not bad. And hello, AVRE. Everyone loves you. It's nice to see that I actually have armor to be able to withstand it, though. If it's... Even if it's slightly, it's still armor. Tiger 2 tracks... What is that, a bot? Enemy armor 
Uh, sorry, but it felt like one for a moment. Avoid giving him... Was that an immediate snap on the lower plate? I gotta double check. That was an immediate snap on the lower plate. That is... Okay. I've been playing this game for years. Alright. One of the biggest reasons why I decided to just up and disappear two times in a row is because of that. Born Leader, okay, Brothers in Arms, Born Leader, whatever the heck they changed the perk name to, and Steady Aim. For those of you that don't know this, it's actually a global buff across the board. It's 10% per category of your um, accuracy, which means that if you have that on with um, Born Leader or Brothers in Arms, you have this combination that actually is equivalent to almost 40% of an accuracy bonus to 42% accuracy bonus with two perks. Not even using all the accuracy perks, just those two. And you already have a massive advantage to your accuracy. In my opinion, they need to remove Steady Aim because Steady Aim is one of the most overpowered perks in the game. It's broken the accuracy of the game and it allows snapshots to the fullest. It's just ridiculous. Anyways, this tank, it's got five crew members. You're looking at a commander, which is also the radio man, a gunner, driver, and two loaders. I am I got really confused looking at the bottom left of the screen, seeing two radio men dead, two gunners dead, a commander dead, a driver dead, and two loaders dead. The, the double gunner, double radio man makes no sense in my opinion. Somehow taking top of the team, and I didn't really play too well. And... Uh, at the top tier match. Charlemagne, that's good to see on the enemy team. Honestly, Charlemagne is underrated, and I don't I don't know why people don't play that tank more often. Sure, it's got a long reload, but whenever it comes down to it, it is one of the most nimble British tanks, in my opinion. I wouldn't exactly say nimble, it's just that it's 35 top speed and it's power to weight that it has. It's always able to maintain that 35 uh, around 80% of the time whenever you're driving around, so it makes it, it feels really good on its travel time. Same thing about the, uh, what's it called? Uh, Caliban. The Caliban. Unfortunately, the Caliban got nerfed. And everyone paid for it. I, I even bought the premium pack that the tank came with, and it came with, um, advanced reload, so you could swap shells, and then it was removed, which essentially killed the tank's DPM and killed the tank's performance tenfold. So, that's always fun. I don't think I want to pull this. I think I'm a little bit faster than the rest of these guys. Yeah, but I got Tiger, VK7501K, SDA2 Black. We're going to pull back right here instead. This feels like a better play right here. And we can kind of pull out it with our front left, so if we need to, we can really get some funky angles on this. Which is pretty nice to see, especially with the way the pike nose in this is designed. Because it's not exactly a pike. I mean, it still is a pike. It's just a really extreme angled pike. Yeah, heat round right through the top. Caliban, not Caliban, Charlemagne. I don't know why I'm saying Caliban. I guess I'm thinking about British tanks and Churchill 7s and Black Princes. And I think that's, if I really wanted to, I could load heat. Why is that red? That's going to bounce. That's always going to bounce right at the top armor. That's 50 millimeters of awesomeness on that uh, tiger. King Tiger. Tiger 2. You know, it's red. Okay. It's red. I'm going to fire at that next time it pulls out. And then I'm going to ask Wargaming why it is it's red. Because that's a guaranteed bounce. And the guy's name is Highlander. I'm so sorry they named a tank after you. Maybe not. Really good side armor on this, though. You can kind of over-angle a tad bit. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's... Mm, 212 and then 200 APCR. Kind of feel like I want to pull that one more time, but King Tiger's going to be on the right. I might load a heat round and put it through the forehead of the King Tiger. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Since this guy has no idea where to aim on me. 
King Tiger right through the forehead. Unfortunate. We are tracked. I think the lower plate might actually be at an auto ricochet right now. That's not, though. Let's back up a tad bit. Give him a funky angle to fire at. Is 11 to 8. And see right here, the heat round is just going to drill straight through that turret. 285 is a little bit obsessive. And you're going to die. Nope, nope. Good, good. And since we're loading heat, German armor always suffers against heat rounds. You can pretty much fire anywhere on them. Uh, tier 8 and lower, that is. Tier 9, it gets a little bit tricky. E75 has got some really thick armor. And if they're playing it right, it gets even better. Now, I don't think... I do have my clutch on point. Okay. If you guys don't utilize clutch in this game, which is down in the D-pad, you're missing out on a lot. You know, looking at the armor design, this might be really good at reverse side scraping. Just like the 260 is. 260, if you play it right. That's an amazing reverse side scraper. T28 HTC. Yeah, judging from the side armor, if you reverse scrape inside this, oh, yeah, that is nasty reverse side scrape ability. I think next match we're going to try and get a reverse side scrape in. If I can pull it off anywhere on the map. Because that's going to be gross. Double barrel popping up. 4,220 damage. Good job. Third place. I still hate the fact that the MVP screen is in there. Demolition expert. What did I am, Iraq? Uh, it's not like I can find out because it's never going to tell me to begin with. And up against tier 10 on Melanovka. Honestly, not bad. Six degrees of gun depression, though. I'm probably going to take my normal path. I want to see how many people go right, though, before I try it. Or I might just full send it by myself. I don't really care if anyone comes with me. I'll I'll do what I can, and then we'll see, we'll see what happens. E50M looks like he's going that way. Wind of whatever the heck the name is with your automatic suspension, your hydraulic suspension. It's not manual. I'm sorry, my friend. If it was if it was manual, we had to actually click a button to engage it. It would be worthwhile. But since it's automated, all automated suspensions take away from a tank, in my opinion. Because if you're looking down ever so slightly, you you lose all mobility, and it's been like that in all of the automated ones. But in ones that are manual, I, I would prefer manual across the board. And then I wonder if they have uh, two gun depression loadouts for that thing. Telling you what it is. I did notice I had 30 millimeters of side armor, which makes it kind of struggle doing anything. My opinion, so it's kind of a one-trick pony tank. The travel speed in these rounds. What was it, 1450? You can feel it. That is really comfortable. And then the top speed of the tank is just absolutely phenomenal. Hmm, 300 heat pen. It is 180 millimeters of lower plate armor, so you do want to be a little bit careful on that. He does have a longer reload than me, so um, I can just sit. And since I'm playing in Wi-Fi, I guarantee that I'm going to have some really bad lag moments as well. Even though you see 10 MS, 14 MS on the top left, that's going to skyrocket for no reason to like 500 because I'm playing in Wi-Fi. And my Wi-Fi is stable across the board. It's just their servers on Wi-Fi for whatever reason. Maybe. They might have fixed it. I have no idea. Doesn't really matter. However, so... Could have been a better pull if I took some time out to aim. 
390 ricochet. Medium ore. Alright, that's a pin. Why are you focusing out the eight? I'm really lost. Is it because of the name? I hope it's not because of the name. I guarantee it's because of the name. Yeah, I guarantee it's because of the name. Guns broke. Guns back. Really good armor, though. Really comfortable armor. Playing up with up in front row with IS-7. They weren't even focused on the IS-7. They were focused on trying to take down the Tier 8. That wasn't even pinning them at the time. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, I don't want to overkill anything. Um, I'll, I'll play the game when I can. Uh, whenever I feel like jumping on and maybe checking out some content that comes into the game. But regular uploading or regular doing anything. I just don't feel the... Um, I don't feel it anymore. And one of the biggest reasons why, and it's something that I've never really wanted to share, is because of this perk by itself. Steady Aim. Um, I'll show you a quick example of what Steady Aim does entirely. Bison T103 might be a bad example. Uh, I'm going to select something else. Oh yeah, let's, let's choose a really bad tank. The Death Chariot. Here we go. So, 1.18 accuracy during rotation. 0.39 base accuracy... Accuracy during movement, 3.18. We're going to change that real quick. I'm going to remove the uh, premium consumable off this so we get a better idea for it. All right, now that the premium consumable is gone, jump back in, 1.18. 0.41 accuracy, accuracy during movement, 3.31. We're going to add one perk to this. And that one perk we're going to add is going to be steady aim. Then, after steady aim, we're going to put born leader on. Immediately you notice the jump across the board. Accuracy for the uh, during rotation just went from, what was it, 1.18 to 0.94. Then accuracy during movement went from, what was it, 3.36 or 3.33 to 2.96 and from 0.41 base accuracy to 0.37. Now, let's put Born Leader on top of this. Now, we jump down to turret rotation. Accuracy during turret rotation to 0.92. Base accuracy somehow went from 0.37 to 0.35. You guys, how does a 10% modifier to the perk itself suddenly give it like an extra, I, I don't know, like 40% effectiveness or 20% effectiveness, it, it's supposed to be 10%. So in all reality, it should round it off to like 0.36. I don't see how it went from 0.37 to 0.35. And then accuracy during movement went from, what was it, 0 0.296, 0 0.298, down to point, well, 2.81. So this right here, the effect that steady aim has, a lot of people are going to say it's just 10%. The thing is, it's 10% across the board, okay? Whenever you talk about um, of perks affecting across the board, to give you an idea... Snapshot, 12% increase to turret rotation. If we put snapshot in place of this, it only affects turret rotation, okay? Run and gun, 10% accuracy when moving. It is only affecting when moving. So essentially, run and gun is a useless perk because how often are you firing in the move? Suddenly, steady aim is run and gun all in one plus benefits to every other category that actually outmatch snapshot by itself because if we just took snapshot by itself then our base accuracy would have never changed our base accuracy was still would have been 0.41 but since the base accuracy went from 0.41 to 0.35 suddenly this perk is outmatching snapshot and running gun combined by itself because it improves the base dispersion values at 100 meters which means that you have a tighter bloom across the board even where if you have maxed out really bad aim time this is still going to be pitching in and making it absolutely ridiculous in my opinion steady aim is a perk that needs to be removed from the game or it only needs to affect a single category because it is ridiculous on the amount of accuracy that is inside this game anymore and I 
whenever people stop and they say like, oh, RNG hates me today over on Reddit or I'm looking over at the Discord and people are complaining about not being able to land a single shot, I, I sit there and I'm all like, I've never experienced that. On days that I have problems aiming and I can't really hit weak spots, do you want to know what I do? Suddenly, I don't care where I shoot. That's what I do. I'll load a couple more high explosives and I'll throw those out. 10 high explosives for 150 damage, 200 damage, that's 2,000 damage a match. If you're unable to pin the target and you're constantly having problems with your aiming, splash them. Whatever. Splash them. You'll be fine. But I, I just think that it's ridiculous that there's so much accuracy in game and they're doing nothing about it. Anyways, you guys, thanks for jumping in. Thanks for, you know, spending the past 30 five minutes 36 minutes with me um i gotta say 259a uh this would probably be considered a really good performer in my opinion in my eyes based upon just a little bit of experience i had with it if anything this if i come back to the game and i'm playing nonstop, which i might play for the next couple of days this will be a tank i'll focus on a little bit because it does feel really good anyways guys i'll catch you in the next one um whenever i do it i'm probably not even gonna put a thumbnail in this video I'm just gonna be thrown up there as like i don't even know what the title is gonna be anyways you guys have a great day afternoon, night whatever time you're catching this i'm gonna open my desk nope i don't need to it's on my table and i'm gonna take i have a gummy it's melatonin anyways catch you guys in the next one